Hello, I'm Harold Jones, Dean of the School of Health Professions at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. Thanks for joining us today for another discussion in our continuing monthly series where we interview experts in our school. These experts are leaders helping to shape the future of health care through tailoring innovative solutions to real world problems. Joining us is Dr. David Brown, director of our PhD in Rehabilitation Sciences program. He has 20 years experience as a physical therapy educator and 15 years working as a clinical physical therapist. His research focuses on locomotor and balance dysfunction in people with neurological impairments. He is also the founder of Kinea Design, a research development and engineering design firm specializing in human interactive mechatronics. David, thank you for joining me today. My pleasure. Uh, the first question I want to ask you before we talk about uh, the Rehabilitation Science PhD program is I'd like for you to give us a little bit of your background in research and your current research interests. My primary interest is in stroke rehabilitation and uh, people's ability to recover their walking ability after they've had a stroke. I'm particularly interested in two lines of investigation. First, I'm interested in what it is about the brain after stroke that makes it more difficult for a person to be able to walk. So I study the neuromuscular coordination, neural control mechanisms underlying walking ability post-stroke. And the second thing I'm interested in is understanding what are active agents or exercises in the world of physical therapy that can be used to change the way the brain works so that people are able to function better out in, into the real world. David, I know that some of your most recent research uh, is involved using a device called the Kinney Assist, which you were involved in developing. Tell me a little bit about that particular piece of technology, how that fits into rehabilitation, how you're using that in research, and how that could potentially be of great help to both patients and to caregivers. Well, the Kinney Assist is a unique type of technology. It's what's called a, a cobot or collaborative robot. It, it involves sensors throughout the system that detect a person's intended movements and the force with, it, with which they want to move, and then takes those movements, turns them into signals that then allow the mechanism to move with the person. So in the case of the kinney assist, there is a mechanism that wraps around the person's waist, detects the direction that they want to walk in, and the speed with which they want to move in, and then it, it commands the wheels of the device to follow along with the person in what's called a transparent manner so that the person does not feel the device behind them. What that allows an individual to do is to engage in a lot of environmentally relevant mobility tasks uh, that are challenging to them, such as uh, tasks that may uh, make it more difficult for them to balance or may make them at risk of losing their balance and falling, and the device is there to catch them if they were to lose their balance. So that means now the, the uh, situation where a person is learning how to move and how to balance better, they're being challenged at the highest level possible, they're losing their balance, and they're learning from their mistakes and hopefully improving their movement based on, on their goal of being able to achieve the task correctly. That's very interesting. It sounds in many regards like you're mimicking the way that a person learns to walk initially or a child learns to walk. Yes, it actually is modeled after the way children learn to walk. As you know, uh, they see something in front of them, a toy or their mother, and they feel greatly compelled to, to approach that, but they trip and fall along the way. But it's no big deal. They just get right back up and, and keep moving towards, towards their goal. And uh, that's the kind of situation we want to create in the, in the clinic. Share with us something about this program, about the nature of the program, what it looks like to a student coming into it, what are some of the experiences that they have along the way. Give us a feel for what a Rehabilitation Sciences PhD program looks like, especially this one at UAB. It's a great uh, challenge to be the, the first program director of anything. And uh, my years of experience as a, as a mentor for PhD students sort of gives me the background to, to develop this program in a way that allows rehab science to accept many different types of students into the program. 
this program tries to capitalize on the fact that rehabilitation science is a science of connections, connecting basic science to translational science to activities and participation of individuals who are going through recovery from health conditions and disease processes. So what we try to do is have a program that accepts people from a variety of backgrounds, individuals in engineering, in nursing, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, respiratory therapy, any, any discipline that focuses on the rehabilitation process or questions around rehabilitation. And these individuals all come together in a nice diverse mix and uh, are, are uh, given the opportunity to learn the grounding of rehab science, which are the basic structures and functions of the body that are affected by health condition and disease processes, how these basic structures and functions affect activities that people perform in daily life, and how these activities affect a person's participation in society. And by forging these connections, these individuals take a, uh, a more interrelated view of science as opposed to just focusing on very narrow topics in a scientific discipline. When a person receives a PhD in rehabilitation science, what are some of the ways that they can use that degree as they move forward in their career? Well, of course, there's the more traditional route, which is to go into academia where a, a student or a graduate might uh, do a postdoc uh, to get further independent grounding in their research and then go on and apply for academic positions at the assistant, associate, and full professor levels. But we're also gearing people to become advocates for uh, clients who go through the rehab process, consultants to government agencies and private foundations which need input on rehab issues, and also uh, become change agents within the world of rehabilitation. That is, find situations where society or the, the world requ requires some new approach to uh, uh, the needs of people who are going through the rehab process, and then they provide the evidence and the support for making these changes in society. If a student is exploring rehabilitation sciences, PhD programs, or similar programs, and they're looking across the country at those, what would you say about UAB's program that is either unique or special that would make a student choose UAB as opposed to another site to receive their doctoral education? I think this uh, collaborative environment uh, where students uh, can choose faculty members to be on their thesis committee from a variety of different schools and different faculty and actually bring different perspectives together so that they can take an approach to their PhD that is truly unique to where they want to go with their career. We, we obviously, we can't prescribe a person's uh, topic or their interest in rehab science because rehab science is so broad. So we expect our students to come to us, us with matured and careful thinking about what they want to do with a PhD in rehab science and then it's for us to figure out how to put the the moving parts together so it's for those individuals who really have a good sense about themselves and a direction that they want to go with their career because once we know what that is with a student we can then work with them to to put that together as you describe the program you discussed a number of possibilities and a wide breadth of opportunities understanding that you don't want to offend anybody or leave anybody else out, could you at least uh, tell us a few of the real strength areas you see at UAB that might attract students who are interested in research in those areas? Well, that's a good question because our first year is what I would call the grounding year where we expose students to three key topic areas in rehab science. One of them is movement science, and there's a great deal of movement science type research going on on this campus. Myself, uh, for example, or, or Dr. Bickel, who are interested in uh, the underlying neural or muscular mechanisms that relate to movement disorders or movement problems. Secondly is the topic of exercise science, where we have a, a great number of exercise physiologists on campus or people who are doing exercise related studies. Dr. Mar Marcus Bamman is, is a great example of an individual who has been very successful in developing uh, exercise programs for people uh, with a variety of um, health conditions. 
And then third is the area of occupation science, and that really capitalizes on the strengths of the occupational therapy department, uh, which has individuals like Laura Vogel who are working with people with uh, spectrum disorders, autism spectrum disorders, and individuals like uh, Dr. Mary Warren who are working with individuals with low vision impairments. So you can see it's, it's broad, but, but we have definite clusters of strength that we capitalize on. One of the areas that has been very uh, popular that there's been a lot of discussion about with health care reform and with more of a change in focus to health and quality of life as opposed to just sickness and how to treat diseases has been this whole area about how do you improve quality of life for people with disabilities or conditions uh, that cause them to have uh, some type of physical disability. Uh, are there opportunities for research in that area? And if so, what are some of those opportunities? Well, um, one new trend in rehabilitation science is the more patient-centered outcomes research uh, type uh, approach to research, where uh, uh, the researcher is providing information and knowledge to patients and asking them to make choices about directions that they want to go that are uh, congruent with their particular cultural beliefs and their backgrounds and their understanding of themselves. And this is very different from the way I was trained as a researcher, where the researcher came down and, and chose for the patient what would, what would be their interventions that they would be, um, uh, that, that would uh, constitute the study. So uh, I think this is going to be a challenge for researchers, and we're on top of that challenge. We have several faculty here on campus that are focused in patient-centered research, and I think our students will graduate with a, with a strong knowledge and, and ability in that area. David, thank you once again for joining us today and sharing with us your expertise in the area of rehabilitation science, telling us about your research, and telling us about the Rehabilitation Sciences PhD program here at UAB. Thank you. To learn more about our Rehabilitation Science program, visit the website at uab.edu slash rsphd. If you have any questions or comments about this topic, please also feel free to contact us at uab.edu slash shp slash contact. And while you're on our website, be sure to learn more about our school. Once again, thank you for joining us. I'm Harold Jones, Dean of the UAB School of Health Professions, where we're shaping the future of healthcare through tailoring innovative solutions to real-world problems.